In this episode, I'll be answering a question. Is not eating after 3 p.m. a good idea? Watch all the way to the end because the results may surprise you. Without further ado, my name is Jeremy Colon and this is The Dark Side of Fitness, episode 37. Does the time of the day you eat matter? A recent University of Alabama Birmingham study found that not eating after 3 p.m. led to a greater weight loss and a more flexible eating schedule. As straightforward as the summary sounds, there's a lot to unpack here because as you can imagine, the details really matter the most on this one. Let's take a look. Here's some quick background information on this study. The researchers were more interested in learning more about a version of intermittent fasting known as early time restricted feeding or ETRF. They define ETRF as eating within a consistent window of 10 hours or less and fasting for the rest of the day. Early is key here because it means that the eating window starts in the morning and ends by late afternoon or early evening. In previous research, ETRF has been shown to not only induce weight loss, but when compared to other diets equal in calories, it also leads to greater improvements in blood pressure and insulin sensitivity, even in the absence of weight loss. It's speculated that aligning your daily energy intake with your metabolism's natural circadian rhythm may confer health benefits. For example, insulin sensitivity and the thermic effect of food both peak in the morning, according to the research. Researchers. So hypothetically, it might be better to eat more of your calories during that time. Here's how the study worked. In a 14-week study, the researchers set out to compare an ETRF schedule of 8 hours versus a 12-hour eating window. Participants were divided into two groups. The ETRF group, participants were instructed to consume all meals between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. at least six days a week. The 12-hour group, these volunteers were instructed to eat all their meals within any 12-hour window they desired and at least six days a week. Both groups were counseled to eat 500 calories below what was required to maintain their weight and exercise 75 to 150 minutes per week. There were 90 participants, 80% female, average age was 43, average BMI was 39.6. In addition to body weight and body fat, the researchers measured blood pressure, blood glucose, insulin levels, and other indicators of metabolic health. Here's what the study found. The ETRF group lost more weight than the 12-hour group. However, there was no significant difference in actual fat loss. As for blood markers, there was no difference between groups for blood glucose, insulin, or other metabolic risk factors. But the ETRF group did experience a significant greater reduction in diastolic blood pressure. Both groups reduced calorie intake by the same amount, about 580 calories per day, below what was predicted would maintain their weight. This was slightly more than the 500 calories they were shooting for. However, when the researchers applied a formula that takes into account metabolic adaptation, it indicated that the ETRF group actually had a caloric deficit that was 214 calories per day greater than the 12-hour group. This helped explain the difference in weight loss between both groups. Here are some coaching takeaways for the study. The results aren't really surprising. The more you restrict eating windows, the more you're likely to restrict calories. Plus consider this. Dinner is most people's largest meal of the day, and the evening hours are when many people are socializing and relaxing, both which are cues for eating. Number two, the ETRF approach isn't practical, at least not a strategy that most people can or want to sustain for the long run. For instance, it's pretty incompatible for those who value eating dinner with family or enjoy dining out with friends. Granted, the folks in the study were only instructed to follow ETRF for six days a week, so that did provide some flexibility. However, 41% of participants in the ETRF group said they wanted to continue with the approach after the study was over, according to the scientists. But by comparison, a 12-hour window where people can eat whatever they wanted was also effective for fat loss. The folks averaged more than half a pound of fat loss per week for 14 weeks. Number three, it's possible that ETRF provides certain metabolic benefits. However, those benefits were included in the study. The scientists point out that this was at odds with most studies on ETRF. Of course, keep in mind, what might be optimal for metabolic health in a short-term study might not be a good fit for someone overall. For instance, if the approach negatively impacts their mental, social, and emotional well-being. I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, please like, share, subscribe. Share this information with anybody who benefit from this. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.